came to you, you put your um, hold this pen, keep yeah. the make sure the ink is on the screen like this. Yeah. Okay? I'm gonna put my pen here and hold it. Now I'm gonna whisper you another instruction that none of these people can hear at all, okay? okay. And you've got to follow that instruction, okay? So we'll just do that for a minute or two and then I'm going to ask people where they can work out what your instruction was. already to guess at what instruction it was that I gave my what do you think I asked it to do? To mirror you but flipped 180. Okay. Was that your instruction? No. Oh, okay. Did uh, go at that any other question any other ideas about what your instruction was? It was maybe just to draw like an odd pattern and for you to follow. Draw it was for here to like do something and you to follow. Me to follow her? Yeah. Okay. Anything else? What did it look like? Do you generally not know or you've look got an idea? So anyone got some ideas they've not just not said yet about what what their instruction was? It wasn't doing the mirror image, it wasn't me copying you. Anything else? What does it look like that she's done? Or oh, try and get inside the head and work out what instruction <laughs> could have been. No? Okay. Can you tell the group and the camera now what your instruction was, what I asked you to do? To keep the not of the elastic band over this blue dot. <clears throat> so when he was moving it away, I needed to keep it so that that was there. Do any of you think that was what the instruction was? No? No. Okay. Okay. So, uh, do you want to grab a seat? Yeah. And Karen, keep the video going. Um, why do you think that's important that I'll demonstrate now? Any thoughts or not? No? So what all you were doing was keeping the knot of this rubber band over the dot, yeah. essentially. Yeah. But what it looks like is that you're doing the mirror image of what I'm doing. Yeah. It looks like you're almost deliberately doing the opposite, or you're trying to mimic what I'm doing. And we're trying to base that judgment on what we can see, on the observable behaviour. Okay? And that's what we see often when, we, when we're looking at people interacting, we see their observable behaviour. And we try and explain things through their behaviour and thinking, they did this because the other person did this. We're basing it on, the, on what we see from the outside. Okay? But actually, you're telling me, because I gave you instruction, that wasn't what you were doing at all. All you were doing was trying to keep the knot over the dot. And the behaviour, which you've got this record for on the screen, was just your way of doing that, wasn't it? Yeah. And I could have pretty much done anything here and you would have to do the opposite just to keep the knot over the dot. Now the idea of perceptual control theory is that that's not just unique to rubber bands and dots, but that's how we manage everything. All the things that we do and all the goals we have and all the tasks we do from day to day, they're not about repeating some behaviour, because that behaviour needs to be continually flexible to what's going on in the environment, to me sort of trying to draw the person away, to the person sort of having obstacles to doing that. The idea is that what we do, what we have is we all have our own knots and dots. We all have our internal references for what we want and we go through the world trying to make our perceptions match. And the same way as this, as you were trying to make the 
the knot of this rubber band be right over the top of that dot. The idea is that through life, that's what we do. We go through and we do things to make us feel a certain level of happiness because that's what we want. To live, to have a certain level of comfort because that's what we want. When we're talking to someone, we control our personal distance to them to make it a comfortable level. When we set a goal for ourselves in our exams, we have certain criteria that we, that we set for ourselves. And when we are sort of giving instructions to someone else as where to go, we don't instruct them and tell them how to move their legs in front of each other. We don't give them instructions about their behaviour. We tell them what we expect them to perceive. So we say, you know, you'll notice the church on the corner and that's where you, where you head right towards um, the, uh, the university. So we're, we, we assume that people can do things to achieve their ends and we just help illustrate what those perceptual goals are. And the idea is that how, is how living systems functions, that's how humans function, by having these ways of um, controlling their experiences. And the behaviour is just the way to manage that. And the behaviour needs to be continually flexible to the environment to, to manage that process. So for example, if I gave you instructions to get from here to the Sakonis building, if I gave you those instructions in behaviours and you did exactly the same thing as me, that wouldn't control for the fact that the traffic lights go on at different time or there's different people in front of you at different times. You need to, to manage that yourself and sort of adapt and control your own experiences because the environment changes in a kind of ongoing way.